Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Chapter 15 has arrived and it was a jam-packed ride of awesomeness and fun. It sets up the showdown between Din and Moff Gideon that's surely coming in Chapter 16 quite nicely and also provides some really great moments between Din and Mayfeld, I gotta say. So, let's break it down and talk about our top 6 baller moments from Chapter 15, The Believer. Starting with our number 6 baller moment, Mando and the crew spring Mayfeld. The episode opens with Mayfeld doing his hard time by breaking down scrap and salvage. At one point, there's a bat-looking alien prisoner we see. That prisoner is a Hask, a species who first appeared in canon in Smuggler's Run, a Han Solo and Chewbacca adventure, and we've also seen them in Maz Kanata's castle in The Force Awakens. Marshal Cara Dune soon arrives and remands Mayfeld into her custody, which is a nice incentive of her newfound position within the New Republic. That prisoner droid wasn't taking any crap from Mayfeld and was ready to bust his ass with that electro baton. So Mayfeld follows Cara Dune and is relieved when the Mandalorian that initially appears is Boba Fett, whose armor has a nice fresh paint of coat on it. The moment Din appears from Slave 1, Mayfeld starts shaking in his boots. Din and Kara explain to Mayfeld that they need him because of his knowledge of Imperial codes and protocols, and the crew then board Slave 1 and prepare to leave. Seeing the cargo hold of Slave 1 was so cool, and watching the outside swivel as the inside of the cargo hold remained in place was dope. Din and Kara inform Mayfeld they need Moff Gideon's coordinates for his cruiser since Gideon has kidnapped Grogu. Mayfeld agrees to help, telling them he'll need to access an Imperial term terminal and that he believes there's a terminal on Morak as the planet serves as a secret Imperial mining hub. Boba Fett is able to do an initial scan of Morak and confirms there's an Imperial refinery station on the planet and they appear to be refining the dangerously volatile Rhydonium, which first appeared in canon in the Clone Wars episode Missing in Action. Shout out to my homeboy Gregor, that's a great episode of the Clone Wars. That brings us to our number 5 baller moment, the crew arrive on Morak. The crew soon land on Morak and begin scoping out the scene. They decide they're going to infiltrate and commandeer an Imperial Combat Assault Transport, which looks very much like an HCVW A9 Turbo Tank we saw in Rogue One, and its predecessor, the HAVW A6 Juggernaut we saw in Revenge of the Sith, which makes sense since the transport is referred to as a Juggernaut at one point. The crew want Mayfeld and Cara Dune to drop onto the transport, get in, mess up whomever's inside, and steal the vehicle to quietly break into the Imperial Refinery. Mayfeld has an issue with that part of the plan however, since the facility is run by XISB, which is the Imperial Security Bureau, who can genetically scan people in the facility, meaning Cara Dune will get pinged as New Republic, Fennec wanted by ISB, and Boba merely says they'll recognize my face, which is great. That leaves Din, who agrees after he scans the transport and realizes he'll be able to wear Stormtrooper armor and cover his face. Love how the Imperial tank driver's armor looks. Din and Mayfell jack up the Imperial tank drivers, get their armor on, and you just know it's coming that Din's gonna have to reveal his face at some point. They've been setting this up all season. Din gives Cara Dune his armor to watch over, and Mayfeld and Din set off, bringing us to our number 4 baller moment. Din and Mayfeld make their way to the Imperial Refinery. I have to say, Bill Burr was really great in this episode, and his interactions with Din were superb. As the two drive towards the refinery, I really appreciated seeing the villagers of Morak, as well as Mayfeld's comments about the Empire and New Republic being all the same to the people of this planet, which has sadly been true in Star Wars. Whether it's the Republic, the Empire, or the New Republic, the galaxy is just too vast and people seem to suffer at least somewhere in the galaxy. Mayfeld goes on about how there are always people that will be subjugated regardless of the regime that's in power, and mentions how both Mandalore and Alderaan are gone, echoing what Din said to Bo-Katan back in Chapter 11. Have to imagine the Empire has fabricated the destruction of Mandalore to plunder the planet for its best car. I also really appreciated Mayfeld challenging Din's hardline rules set by the Children of the Watch. This scene, as well as what happens later in the episode, continue a theme that's persisted this season, where Din's notions of what it means to be Mandalorian are challenged. His perception of what it means to be Mandalorian will undoubtedly differ by the end of this series from when it began. The Juggernaut comes under attack by a slew of pirates whose species I'm not sure of. If you know the name of that
that species, let me know down in the comments. Din then gets on the roof of the Juggernaut to fight off the pirates who are attempting to blow up their Idonium with thermal detonators. I also appreciate the moment when Din realized the Stormtrooper armor was hot garbage. Din and Mayfeld are soon able to thwart the pirate attack, taking us to our number 3 baller moment, Din and Mayfeld infiltrate the refinery. Once inside the Imperial refinery, Din and Mayfeld are saluted like heroes by a bunch of Stormtroopers, including a bunch rocking Sand Trooper armor. Love the Sand Trooper armor, guys. Mayfeld soon finds a terminal in the officer's mess hall, but learns his former superior officer, Valen Hess, is eating and might recognize him. Din takes the data stick they've acquired and proceeds to the terminal. As expected, Din is unable to access the terminal once a scan is done while he's still wearing his helmet. Desperate, our boy removes his helmet, bending his rules and code, much like Mayfeld mentioned earlier. Once the scan works, Din is able to obtain the coordinates of Moff Gideon's cruiser, but Valen Hess moves in to get Din's attention. Mayfeld arrives to alleviate the tension, and I liked how he said that the officer will have to speak up since Din's vessel lost pressure in Tanab, a planet first mentioned in Return of the Jedi. I chuckled when Mayfeld said Din's nickname is Brown Eyes, which, that's great. Brown Eyes, TK-111, and Valen Hess share a drink, but things go south quickly when Mayfeld suggests to toast to Operation Cinder. Operation Cinder was part of the contingency, a plan devised by Emperor Palpatine to ensure that the Empire and its enemies did not outlive him in the event that he died. The operation saw the Empire use satellites in orbit of planets, which would form a climate disruption array that would ravage the planet. Yo, Sidious was truly maniacal. Anyway, as Mayfeld is recalling the events of Operation Cinder on Burning Khan, and Valen Hess continues to flap his gums, Mayfeld blasts his ass, and Mayfeld and Din have to quickly make their escape. Fennec Shand and Cara Dune help snipe stormtroopers that are moving in on Mayfeld and Din, and Boba Fett arrives and helps get the duo out of there, bringing us to our number two baller moment, Mayfeld's a free man. As mentioned earlier, Bill Barr was fantastic in this episode, especially during his scene where he speaks with with Valen Hess. I love that moment because it makes Mayfeld nuanced and a layered character as opposed to the Cretan that he was back in season one. As Boba Fett and Slave One move to evade incoming ties, he releases a seismic charge that we saw his father, Jango Fett, use against Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones. Just awesome. Those seismic charges are so cool. Mayfeld also blows up the refinery using Fett's cycler rifle, which the crew can appreciate. Kara then tells Mayfeld he's free to go as they'll claim Mayfeld died in the explosion. Danny and I were both like, how's homeboy getting off world? But I guess our man will have to figure that out. After this episode, I really hope this isn't the last we see of Mayfeld. We then arrive at our number one baller moment, Din is coming for your ass, Moff Gideon. The episode ends with Moff Gideon receiving a lovely transmission from Din, where he echoes the oh-so-familiar words that Moff Gideon echoed to him, Cara Dune, and Grief Karga last season, ending the episode and setting up what will no doubt be a badass showdown next week. What an absolutely amazing touch. This episode was a ton of fun, and as mentioned, I thought there were some really stellar moments. Bill Burr did an excellent job reprising his role as Mayfeld, and I thoroughly enjoyed hearing him speak about Operation Cinder and Burn and Khan. Same can be said of Richard Brake, the actor that played Imperial Officer Valen Hess. That dude just oozed creepy psycho and nailed the role. Additionally, this is the first time Operation Cinder has been mentioned in a series, which I thought was pretty sweet, as it's previously only been been mentioned in the game Battlefront 2 and several comics and novels. Furthermore, my man Rick Famuyiwa really knocked it out of the park this episode, and I hope this isn't the last time he directs for The Mandalorian. He's done a phenomenal job with each of the episodes he's directed. Next week brings us to the season finale with Chapter 16, so you know there's going to be some wildness that's coming, and I can't wait. But what do you guys think? What's your thoughts on Chapter 15? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button, making sure you subscribe, and as always, stay nerdy.